All right. Uh, first, Victor, thanks for taking the time to, to talk to me about this amazing yeah. film. Okay. Thank you. It, I, just, just a little anecdote, like I have a DVD player in my car and I have been traveling around the country and for the longest, this was the film that I watched the most at rest stops and stuff. I just sat there and watched these animals move around because it was just so like peaceful and common to, to, to watch them. So it's like, it's, it, it's, it's weird when I got this opportunity. It's like, yeah, I'm really excited to, to talk to the director of Gunda because, I mean, unless I could talk to the pig or <laughs> somebody else, there's nobody else I want to talk to about this amazing film. But um, first, just tell me a little about why uh, you chose these particular animals, uh, a mother pig, a flock of chickens, and a herd of cows to to represent this 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 farm life that you wanted to display. You know, we we I don't know how is it in the US, in the US, but in in this part of the world in Europe, like in Russia, in Soviet Union, in Europe itself, we were watching a lot of films like a dolphin and elephants and whales and and chimpanzee and all of them intelligent and clever <laughs> and lacy, like so sweet and amazing and adorable. And, and, and I always said, hey, wait a second. <laughs> what about those ones? The tr Trinity, yeah. the Trinity, which is like uh, keeping uh, this, uh, in, uh, this civilization um, uh, life for 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 hundreds and hundred years. What about them? We don't pay attention to them. We eat them, and we'll never say to kids what we are eating, right? We never right. we never think they're adorable as well. We never think they're clever. We never think they have feelings, emotions. We never think they are suffering. We never pay attention to them. So, and of course, if to do film. Uh, about animals, it should be about them because they are the ones we are mistreating most, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder about the process though, just to get the intimacy of their lives with, 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 a, with a camera and a, is there a crew there? Or are you using long zoom lens to, to shoot these animals? Like how do you, how did you get the intimacy without like interfering with without, you know, startling them with a human around them. Like, it's, how did you- like a, Listen, it's easy. Documentary is, uh, the documentary is not fiction, right? Because um, documentary is a little bit like a romance between two people you just met, you, between two people just met first time, like, like first time you meet, you met partner or you met someone you like, or, or you, you kind of have interest to, and then you, you, you have to be careful, right? You have to be careful not to make wrong steps, not to be too fast, not to say something wrong. And you have to open your sense and to feel what your partner is feeling, what to do now, just now, what is his emotions, what he wants to have to turn him to the light in a way he opened his best part, right? Same with, same with documentary. Docum it's like a love dance. You start making documentary and you imagine the person you're filming is a dancing with you and you need to be very careful and you don't make any wrong step, anything rough. You need to be careful and gentle and then it will go smoothly. This is how we treat and this is why we spend time with Gunda and we, with her piglets. We, we made a, first we made a, we designed a house Barn, same as she lived, but with opportunities, my lens can travel around inside her barn 360 mm -hmm. degrees, but our camera and our team is outside. So the only lens was inside. And then of course we were coming every morning, four o'clock in the morning until she walks up, before she walks up. And when she came up, so when she, when she walks up and came out, we already were there. So, so we became friends together. So recently my friends, my, my DOP visited her recently and she noticed him and she, she recognized him and she were running to him. 
just to, mm. to 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 meet him you know she was happy to even it was two years before ago we came here so they have uh, they have all emotions we do yeah i was good that was going to be my next question is like uh are these are these now that these these animals are are movie stars now are they are they going to find more protection than a lot of farm animals that meet like another fate are they are they going to be you know kept from the slaughterhouses and this and that as as animals since they since they now have a you know even an artistic and known value they're, they're now popular they've been made you know popular on film are they are they now protected from you yes, know the fate of least, most absolutely right absolutely right at least at least uh, Gunda is definitely is gonna uh, live until her natural death, but uh, that, that's for sure because the owner of the car, of the farm said, of course Gunda is supposed to live. But it looks like it works, and uh, so many people writing to me, man. So many people writing to me, especially young people, writing to me that, oh thanks, I never, why no one told me this? Why no, my parents didn't tell me this? And I cannot imagine eating meat anymore. So it's it means the film is working and it works. So I mean, it it might change something in in our life. I hope. I hope. Tell me about that moment that that changed you. With uh, I believe the piglet name was Vasia. Uh, Vasia. Ah yes, yes, yes. Okay, can you... His name was Vasia. He was one month old, and I was four years old. He was one month and I was four years and we were like closest friends. This is my first most important memory of my childhood and he was my best friend of my childhood. So, and we were just really enjoying life together and, and running and making a mess in the clean house. And unfortunately by Christmas, in New Year time, he was killed and at, by my relatives. So, it, it, it changed all my life. This moment changed all my life. And actually, I thought it's quite a unique story, but then after making more Gunda, many people came to me and say, oh, it happened to me, say. It happened to me, say. So, uh, yeah, it's not unique in a way. I thought it's quite something, but it happened that, no, 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 many people had same experience which changed their life. and. Uh, since four, I cannot imagine eating meat. So it happened to many people this way. And I would say, you know, it was even before. Once I was with my mom on the street, my first memory, if I remember my first, first memory, I remember I was on the street, maybe I was three years old, and we were just walking on the street, and I, I grabbed the, the leaf from the bush, like one leaf, you know. Mm -hmm. And my mom said, why did you do this? And I said, look, look how beautiful is this leaf. Look to this. And she said, okay, take one of your hair and cut it. Did you feel pain? I said, yes. The, leaf, the bush also feels pain. Don't do it anymore. So mm. this was the key point. I guess this is why we have relatives. We have parents, right? To teach yeah. us kind of basic, which stays all your life is you. And this is the most important in, in families and to have mom and father who can tell you the most important they understood about life. What do you, what do you think of like, if the message of, I guess the message is what you interpret out of this film, but if people watch this film and, and find like more humanity and, and am, animals and, uh, and sentient beings, what, what do you think the, after effect would be i mean i think it's more than i think it's more than hoping for somebody to be vegan i think like what is the societal yeah. effect of like somebody you know just respecting animals like 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 you would like them to i will i will i will i will look wider i will say respecting nature as it is because what we are doing for last hundred for few hundred years we are changing planet we are dominating everything. We are destroying planet for our comfort, right? And before we, we change it, we have to learn how to respect it. We have to learn that everything is here for a reason. 
There is no any creature here appears without reason. It might be reason for them to be here. And they have rights to be here and have right to be happy here. So we just have to find our modest place here, not to, to kill anyone, not to push anyone away, just to be in harmony with them. This is number one. And number two, we have to face that we cannot move forward without empathy. It's just impossible. We, if we don't have empathy revolution right away, we will not change anything. We will not even fix problems with, with climate change. We will not because the amount of, if we are killing this, the, the new numbers came, just came out from 2020. Imagine we killed almost 1.5 billion pigs in 2020. Yeah. Plus 66 billion chickens. Imagine we have to kill them, cut them, freeze them, transport them, put them in plastic, cook them. What the fuck we are doing, right? It's just madness. It's just madness. Yeah. Blood, blood, actually blood everywhere. If you look properly, it's blood everywhere. And we don't even notice how it happened to us. Because 100 years ago, people were eating meat once a week. And now yeah. it's just daily bread, right? Daily yeah. bread. Everyone wants to eat meat. And in, in the US, you eat over 120 kilogram meat per year. Can you imagine? So, so we are we are a little bit um, blind, you know, blind, and we have to yeah. we have to wake up. What what was the I mean, what was the moment when uh, Joaquin Phoenix got involved? I know he wasn't the first producer to get involved with this and to to, to help make this a reality. But what was what was his interest in this project? Like, what was your conversation or? And how did you guys team up? And, and how has he even brought more awareness to this? Because I know you have like a trilogy of films that talks about this in some form of fashion, but having an Oscar winner, like how, how did, how did, how yeah. is that? Yeah, this was, this was important because before I, I was making it and I did not articulate, I only spoke with my producer, with Anita, Rehoff Larson and with Justin Barnes. I was talking what I want to do, but before jo before Phoenix appeared, I did not put it in the world like uh, uh, officially, let's say to public. I only was talking inside my team and inside my crew every morning, I was making this motivation speech, explaining why we are killing it. And, and then he, Yakim made this speech in Oscar and all my team were calling me saying, did you write his speech? Did you write his actual speech? I said, no, I did not. But he's just saying word by word what we, what you normally say to us before shooting. And we sent him, Jocelyn found a way to send him a movie. He watched it and he immediately called me. And he actually, actually said most important thing, which I never kind of uh, pronounced in a way because it was kind of, my natural behavior and my natural reason to make it. And he actually, by calling me immediately saying, finally, someone made film not about us, but about them, how they are, as animals are. To pay attention. So, so the, in the film, as far as there, is no, there are no people, there are no anyone around. So I, for me, it was natural. But when for him, he watched it, without knowing anything, suddenly he said, finally, who someone pay attention to them? Because normally people, if they make movies about this, they film slaughtery house, they made difficult condition animals live in, and so on and so on. But no one pay attention to their personalities. And finally someone watched it in this particular point of view. And this was, was amazing. And, for him and it was very exactly what I felt and this is was the reason I made it. So this is why he immediately became part of the team and without his support, of course, you know, you know, we in Europe, we learn how to make movies, but we don't learn how to promote movie, how to make it visible, 
have to pay, put light on the movie and people watch it. And with Neon help and Hyakim Phoenix help, we can finally make it that people watch it everywhere in the world. Well, well thanks for the time, Victor. I, I, I believe the movie, you know, I believe it changed me in the way I look at, at animals. So I hope everybody else that gets to view it and gets to like, you know, just immerse themselves in these animals' lives could could it could get the vision that 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 you had, that speech and, and what Yaquin felt and keep on making great films like this. And, and I'm I'm sure you'll have an everlasting change on on society and how we how we look at things. So I appreciate your time and your art. Thank you very much for your time and you too. Ciao. Stay safe, man. Stay safe. You too, my friend. Take okay. care.